So Oscar De La Hoya claims that Ryan Garcia is not only the face of his promotional company, but the sport of boxing. He also claims that Garcia would run right through Gervonta Tank Davis. Find out what Gervonta has to say about this and what else is going on with Ryan Garcia and his fight tomorrow. For this and much more box talk, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for much more. Well, Ryan Garcia is back tomorrow. January 2nd and he was able to sell out the event at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas to which made Oscar de la Hoya extremely eager and happy and went on to announce him as the face of his promotional company and the sport. He was able to sell out the event at a 25% occupancy for the arena because of the CDC guideline requirements due to COVID-19 but Oscar is ecstatic and hopeful that this is a good indicator of where his promotional company is headed towards once we return to normalcy in society. However, I did state in the previous video that Ryan Garcia has a ton of pressure on his shoulders. In fact, I believe that the promotional company is riding on those shoulders because if Ryan Garcia is to lose to Luke Campbell, not only would it be a huge setback for his career, but the company itself since they have lost Saul Canelo Alvarez, which is the biggest name in the sport currently. Oscar De La Hoya gave an interview with Boxing Scene and this is what he had to say. After this fight, I will consider Ryan not just the face of Golden Boy Promotions, but the face of boxing. Not having Canelo on our roster is something that we can live with and move on from. Ryan has the opportunity to surpass whatever Canelo has accomplished. Sounding a little bit sour grapes there, but it is what it is. Canelo and him had a major fallout. Canelo walked out from his promotional banner and decided to be a free agent. To the dismay of Oscar De La Hoya, he was left without his superstar in his stable. Uh, those statements are a little bit awkward because Canelo will be walking Ryan Garcia out for his Luke Campbell test. And again, not only is this a major fight for Garcia to see where he stands at technically and boxing wise but for the company if he doesn't succeed in getting the win then it could be a downward spiral for Golden Boy Promotions. Oscar continued by saying I still don't know till this day what exactly I did wrong with handling Canelo's career. We build him to be the biggest star in boxing and there is nothing wrong with that. Instead of trying to become the very best inside of the ring and reaching glory the business side of boxing Boxing has messed with the fighter's head. He also finished with, it's polluted their head, make the fights and then the money will come. A lot of fighters have so many people in their ears nowadays, everybody thinks they are an expert. Although these remarks were a little bit harsh in regards to his former fighter, I don't really blame him because Oscar does feel disgruntled. At the end of the day, Oscar did used to bank on Canelo's name to pretty much carry his promotional company and he's at a point in which he's got to rebuild and Oscar De La Hoya has a solid opportunity if Ryan Garcia's Instagram followers and other social media followers do become and solidify as boxing fans and not just a fan of the individual. To make matters a little bit more awkward, Canelo's trainer Eddie Reynoso, who also trains the young up and rising Golden Boy star and Ryan Garcia, has mentioned and stated that there is an agreement between him and Oscar to keep everything cool between Ryan Garcia's team and his promotional company. However, Oscar does think that there will be more whispers in the new face of his promotional company's ear in the future days to come. Moving on, Oscar thinks that the world champions of the lightweight division seem to need Ryan more than he needs them. I don't think that's the case at all. I don't think Tank does at all. Tank has had his own pay-per-view. Tank has his own appeal and considerable sized fan base. Uh, he also claims that his fighter would walk through Tank. Tank Davis. Nobody's walking through Tank Davis. I don't care if you don't like the kid. He is talented as all hell. He has concussive power. One punch knockout power at that. He could put your guy to sleep, especially with Ryan being untested in the chin department. We don't know how he's going to react to power, especially the type of power that Gervonta Tank Davis brings to the table. I'm not saying I don't want that fight, and I'm not saying I don't want it to happen possibly next if Ryan's able to get past Campbell. All I'm saying is, Oscar's in the wrong for thinking that his fighter walks right through him, and that could be detrimental if they go into a fight of that magnitude and that caliber thinking in that way, because it would make his fighter overconfident if he listens to Oscar. 
Oscar's advice. What I think he needs to do is keep his cool head, go through this fight with Campbell, see how his fighter looks, see what they could work on, and then go back to the drawing board and exploit whatever they see wrong with Tank Davis. Tank Davis has weaknesses. Tank Davis is fast as hell. Tank Davis has power, but he does get hit. If my man Leo Santa Cruz was putting paws on him, could you imagine what a much faster, stronger, more athletic, and younger fighter and Ryan Garcia would be able to do if he does keep his head cool? But then again, we don't know because we don't know what kind of chin he's carrying. For all we know, he can have an Amir Khan chin, and as soon as he gets tapped, it's over with, but we don't know that. Anyway, back on to the Tank Davis talk. Oscar claims that if you would have asked him what he thought about the Tank Davis fight three years ago, he wouldn't have thought his fighter was prepared for it at that point. And there was an interview two years ago, link is in the description box below, that he said that Tank Davis is a beast. And when they asked him if Ryan Garcia was ready for that fight, he said, hell no. He said no and continued acknowledging what kind of an animal Tank Davis was and is. And I'll all of a sudden now he feels like Ryan is prepared for him now and Ryan is ready to walk right through Tank. He says that the reason why he feels that way is because his fighters constantly growing and improving getting faster and stronger but let me ask you this against what kind of opposition? Yes tomorrow Luke Campbell will be his biggest name his toughest test to date but young blue chip prospects such as Ryan Garcia do what they have to do in there. Ryan was just doing what he was expected to do with lesser opponents getting them up out of there that's what they're expecting to do because there's blue chip prospects they are the ones that are considered to be the future of the sport so perhaps it's not that he is getting faster stronger or whatnot not that he's not i'm just stating that there's a lot more questions out there and to make statements the way oscar's making we should wait until after tomorrow and see what happens in the fight with luke campbell you can't be looking past him you can't be talking as if that fight has already been finished we know that garcia is definitely talented he does have quick hands he does have power he does have that drawing that appeal to the masses or at least to people online but we need to see what else he brings to the table and we will find out more tomorrow anyway Gervonta Davis wasted no time and he torched my man back on Twitter questioning whether the golden boy promoter was back on that booger sugar you know so this is setting it up for a really good showdown potentially next because Ryan Garcia wants Tank Davis next and Oscar De La Hoya seems to be in agreement with that. If he really feels like his fighter is ready to walk through Tank, if he does manage to get past Campbell, then I want no excuses. I want to see that fight next. On pay-per-view or on the zone, I don't care. I want to see that fight next so we can really see who's on the up and up. I really want to see what goes down. But the winner of the Luke Campbell fight and the Garcia fight will be the challenger for WBC champions Devin Haney's belt so either way Ryan Garcia is driving this whole show right now he's gonna get to pick and choose whether he wants Devin Haney or a Gervonta showdown which both fights would be major huge and could bring a lot of revenue to all parties involved I prefer the Gervonta fight especially because the way Gervonta carries himself the way he is so quick with it on Twitter and he's able to fire back instantly I, I would love that fight to go down both guys have huge followings on their social media so it would make for a great build-up anyway let's talk about some of the other champions in the weight division since oscar feels like everybody wants a part of his fighter uh, lopez is obviously the main guy to go to right now he holds most of the damn belts at the weight division he did pull in over a million views on the espn plus app against lomachenko and he does have the most credible resume from these young bucks he does have that richard comey win to get that ibf strap he does have that lomachenko win he does have that nakatani win so he is looking the most solid out of all these guys he does have power he is accurate he stays poised and composed just like an older veteran fighter would but he is extremely young and he's getting things done out here he is fighter of the year for the ring tv magazine and really establishing himself as the main to go guy in the division i think ryan garcia has a long way to go before he reaches that kind of status and clout as far as proving himself goes obviously another good name is lomachenko who claims to be staying at that weight division lomachenko brings a ton to the table although he is smaller than these guys i think he should move back down to 130 and establish himself at that weight division since he is smaller than a lot of the fighters at 135 nonetheless if he's willing to test himself against this young crop of new fighters then go for it all these young lines are hungry and taking his name's luster would only make for better resumes 
Even though Lopez has already claimed that name on his resume before the rest of these young guys, it wouldn't hurt for anybody else to take on Lomachenko and possibly get that name on their resume as well. The other champion is the WBC champion and Devin Haney at that weight class, and that's another good fight. But I feel like both Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney are relatively on the same level right now. They're both as untested. They both haven't faced that high level of opposition, even though on January 2nd after Luke Campbell, Ryan will be a step above Devin Haney but then again how are you going to test yourself if you're not getting the opportunities at those names at those higher caliber opponents so if Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney goes down then I'll have no gripes against that fight I would love to see that fight two young guys kind of make themselves the bigger name uh, Eddie Hearn is down for it I'm sure they are the zone wants that fight next because the zone really wants to pull in more viewers and that's definitely a fight that's going to get the interest of the younger public Ryan is not afraid of of testing himself against the most formidable names at the weight he stated the following i make this weight very easily i'm a very disciplined person i can make this weight as long as i want to make it my goal is to beat teofimo lopez to knock out gervonta davis and beat devin haney any order it's in i'm here to conquer this division and be the biggest superstar in boxing and those are some very ambitious words from Ryan Garcia. I really hope that he is able to keep those words and that his promotional company gets behind him and facilitates those fights for him. Eddie Hearn had the following to say about what the possibilities would be in Ryan Garcia facing his main blue chip prospect in Devin Haney if he does get past Luke. It has to happen. The Zone have already said that's the fight. Golden Boy knows. I mean, I think the general feeling is, away from me and most Brits, that Ryan Garcia wins that fight, right? If that's the case, the zone has basically already set Golden Boy matchroom. That's the fight. You make that in April. That would be the next fight for both of them. But he's got to win. Hearn also said you can't fight a final eliminator and then win and not fight the champion. Hearn said, what's the point? Why would you fight Luke Campbell otherwise? I mean, it's a dangerous fight, but he's fighting him because it's for the interim title and it's a final eliminator. So if you win that fight, you fight the champion. He finished off by saying, well, Ryan's got to beat Luke Campbell. But in the event of Luke Campbell twisting his ankle in the fight and Ryan Garcia winning that fight, Haney Garcia is a tremendous fight. Sells out the Staples Center. Two young studs, you know, that's a fight. Then we talk about YouTube boxing. That's the kind of fight that brings in the new generation and the fans. And I completely agree with him. However, all this depends on what happens tomorrow. We can't speak much on anything else in hypotheticals until we see the outcome. I think the Tank Davis fight is massive, especially because of the draw of Tank Davis and the pay-per-view platform he brings along with him. Haney versus Garcia is also a good fight. Both are young up and coming through the ranks. And I think Haney needs some more than Garcia because Garcia, if he does beat Luke Campbell, especially in an impressive fashion, would be much more established than him. Also, that Lopez fight, Lomachenko, we got other names in the division that he could face off against and a few names from south that could come up like uh, Shakur Stevenson, Miguel Burchell, we're looking at Chris Colbert. There's a lot of talent in and around the 135 weight division right now. It's getting red piping hot so it's up for the grabbing. Any of these young studs could take that. Hell, even Chris Colbert, a fighter that I think is very impressive. And although he is a super featherweight, I think he could possibly make a good name for himself at 135 and move on up. Either way, there is a lot for us at 135 as boxing fans and I just want to sit back and enjoy so I hopefully all these fights get made let me know what you guys think what are Ryan Garcia's chances against the likes of Tank Davis Teofimo Lopez Devin Haney or Vasily Lomachenko at 135 does he get the win against them does he lose against them let me know who he beats and who he loses to for this and much more boxing content make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and y'all stay blessed out there have a safe one